Coming up, we take a look at how a labor shortage is affecting our district, let you guys know how our marching lines did at their state competition, and explore how you may want to rethink what you wrap your presents with this holiday season. Stay tuned, you're watching Roar TV. I'm Brianna Babona. Welcome to the first edition of what we're calling the Monthly Main. This is a recap of major happenings in the past month, and for this edition, we're looking back at November and December. First up, we're going to toot our own horn a bit. We learned that reporter Kaylin Herbet won first place nationally in a competition called the Student Television Network Challenges. In this contest, she had six days to write, record, and edit a news story based on the prompt labor shortage. In this report, she examines our own school district struggle to employ bus drivers. Every day is a long day for the Seminole County Public Schools transportation dispatchers, playing one of the most important roles in the education of students in Central Florida. The bus drivers of Seminole County do not take their job lightly, but in the midst of an extreme labor shortage plaguing the nation, Seminole County is lacking around 30 bus drivers, making for a majorly unideal situation. And we've increased our ABO. ABO is, is, is average bus occupancy. So instead of an ABO, we might have 47, 48 elementary students. Now we might have 55 elementary students. It's usually packed. Every single seat is taken, two people per seat, and sometimes there's three. The value of the bus drivers in the public school system has significantly decreased, and their pay has done the same. Paid below the poverty line, the demanding job of being a bus driver is becoming increasingly unattractive to the workforce as large companies will pay more for easier work. A lot of the, jo a lot of the jobs now, like a school bus driver's job, it's being paid um, less than the um, poverty line. So therefore it's hard to get employees when you're not paying that much money. So now you're dealing with Amazon, which pays about 17, 18, 19 dollars, and you're only paying 14 dollars. It's hard to compete with the public sector. The public school transportation dispatch has had to take some unfavorable measures to ensure that each student makes it to school, even at the expense of their office workers. Office staff has to drive now. Office staff has to dispatch. Office staff has to do driving duties. And then after they're done doing their driving duties, they have to come and do their duty. So now we're, we're having these um, employees work Saturday and Sunday just to meet the demand. And the lack of drivers that sit in these seats is having a huge impact on the people who sit in those seats. We're usually three minutes late after the bell is already rung, so we've already missed a part of the class. This causes a tumbling effect. If you're not there for class or you come in late for class, then we have to catch you up and it just keeps happening over and over and over. Bus drivers are also extremely vital to many high school clubs and programs here in Central Florida. They are reliant on bus drivers to be available to drive them to outside activities, and the shortage of drivers has caused many hardships to the programs. We've gone from four buses to three buses just because they don't have enough bus drivers to uh, drive us there, so we've had a pack Pretty, pretty much pack the buses in order to go to games or uh, to, to competitions. A bus driver's importance to the community is undeniable, and now it's up to Central Florida to decide just how to get their buses and drivers back on track. For Roar TV, I'm Kaylin Herbet, reporting. Now in that report, you saw how after-school groups like the band can be affected. Fortunately, the band wasn't prevented from making it to their state competition last month. Just before Thanksgiving, they held one last performance on campus for competing. Mobile journalist William Dean fills us in on how it went for the Marching Lions. They march, they drum, and they can blow some mean brass. This year, our Marching Lions were dazzling audiences with their performance of Be As One, a story of unity told from dance and music. 
in case that somehow wasn't obvious. Two weeks ago, the band performed at home for friends and family one last time as they headed up to state championships, where they'll attempt to set up, perform, and wrap up better than other competing schools in the competition. For the first time, the Marching Lions placed top three at the state level competition last week. With a performance that never disappoints, a personal bravo to our musical lions for ending their season on a high note. For Bird TV, I'm William Dean reporting. BS1. It's really exciting to see the band reach new heights. Speaking of exciting, I'm sure many of you are very excited for the upcoming break. Before leaving for a couple weeks though, our news producer Delaney Warner is in the studio with a few news items you should know. Hey Oviedo, it's Delaney here with some updates. It's the end of the semester and if you didn't attend either picture day and didn't go to Leonard's studio for your school portrait and want to see it in the yearbook, please contact Mr. Langevin before the break. This past weekend was Winter Showcase where our performing arts programs here at Oviedo put on a show for all to see. If you missed it, here are some sights and sounds from the event. New Horizons will be holding a winter holiday fest at Oviedo December 27th through 30th. It's free and lunch will be provided. To register, please email new.horizons at aspirehp.org. And in entertainment news, all eyes are on the box office as Spider-Man No Way Home hits theaters. It's tracking to be the largest weekend at the movies since the start of the pandemic. Speaking of movies, our Digital Lions Productions class is wrapping up a few of their projects this week. Every so often we like to share some of their work and today we want to show you a recent film from junior Mia Johnson. Dear Santa, it's been a long time since I've written you a letter. Haven't done anything like this since I was a little kid. I'm not entirely sure why I decided to do it. I think I've finally figured out what I want this holiday season. I don't know how realistic my wish is, but I figured if anyone could grant it, it's you. You are the expert after all. What I could use, and what I think everyone could use right now more than anything, is reassurance. We've been through a tough last couple years. I miss the simplicity and joy of childhood. The best Christmas gift would be having the opportunity to see the world the way I did as a kid. All the excitement, the wonder of the holiday season. I would love to feel that again. Could you do that for me? Could you still pull through? I believe you can do it. You haven't failed me yet. I haven't asked for anything from you in years, and I hope I'm not asking too much of you now. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you, old friend. We hope you enjoyed Mia's film. That's all for me. Let's head back out to Brianna. Tis the season for giving, and with that giving comes lots of bows, ribbons, and wrapping paper. But did you know that those decorative ways that we can sell gifts to loved ones can be harmful for the environment? Reporter Caroline Krivenos explains why and suggests some alternatives. In the midst of the holiday season, gift wrapping is at an all-time high. A report done by Sundale Research shows that consumers in the U.S. alone spent around $12.7 billion on gift wrap in 2017. Unknown to most of these wrappers, however, is that most of this wrapping paper is non-recyclable and ends up in a landfill. According to Stanford University, Americans alone create 25% more waste from Thanksgiving to New Year's than they do the rest of the year. This adds up to an additional 25 million tons of waste. But why is wrapping paper so bad for the environment? Gift wrap is lined with plastic and is often accompanied with glitter, tape, and ink all of which are factors that reduce the ability to recycle this material. And the continued use of these products will substantially increase the amount of waste in our landfills, making the existing environmental problems even worse. 
The good news is, is that there's some easy, sustainable ways to counteract this problem. Instead of wrapping your gift, forego hiding the gifts altogether, or use newspaper or brown paper, which are both recyclable. You can even opt for a reusable gift bag that the receiver can use again. The holidays won't be ruined by the lack of flashy paper, and the environment won't either. For Roar TV, I'm Caroline Krivenos, reporting. All right, Avito, that's going to be a wrap on not only the episode, but the semester. We want to wish you and your loved ones the best of holidays. Enjoy the break, and we'll see you back here in the new year.